We are talking entrepreneurship, leadership, and also AI today on the show with one of my favorite humans on the planet and definitely a mentor and role model for me in entrepreneurship and business. His name is Scott Duffy. He's an entrepreneur, author, keynote speaker. He's the founder of AI Mavericks, which we will talk about in the end of the episode. And I got my mind blown about AI and I hope you do too. Um, and wow, I mean, he, Scott, well, I asked him to tell you, so he'll fill you in a little, but he started his career at 20 years old, working for Tony Robbins and has been on an incredible entrepreneurial journey, including, um, doing a lot of interviews for entrepreneur.com. Also, while he was working for Tony Robbins, he has been around a lot of very impactful people. And so I asked for him to share some of the lessons that he's learned from those interviews and also from his own incredible entrepreneurial journey. Um, I'll let him tell you a little bit more about that, but just to give you some highlights, um, he was, sold a company to Richard Branson. Um, he really helped put uh, Yahoo and Fox Sports, CBS Sports, like helped in the early days of them getting on the internet, you know? So he has done some really interesting things and he's still up to some interesting things with this AI stuff. So I asked him to share some of that with you guys. Um, and I really just wanted to have Scott on so that you could see some of the mindset that he possesses, the wisdom that he carries in terms of the personal development that it requires to be able to be in such positions in life. And he's just, yeah, he's the best. I hope you guys get a lot out of this episode. We'll get into it. Here is Scott Duffy. Okay, Scott, yay. This has been a long time coming. So many of my clients and people have heard about you. If you guys, you'll recognize some of the stories and I'm so glad to get them from the horse's mouth. I have so much respect for you, not only in the, in the business world, but especially as a person. Um, so in terms of leadership, heart-centered leadership, remaining a good freaking person, through the entire success world that you are like the model of that. And I so respect that. And so but, thank but you. When, when things crashed, <laughs> I called you and I said, <laughs> can you help figure out how I get well? And you are the reason that I, I believe you're the reason I'm sitting here today because I was so far off. I mean, you really helped me to figure out what was going on inside of my body and, and kind of what problems needed to be addressed like mm -hmm. like physically um physiologically you you we did a ton of testing right mm -hmm. we had a ton mm -hmm. of testing we we looked at food we looked at we looked at all of those different things and today i just i feel great and i feel strong and i feel powerful and it's 100 percent because of you well, thank, thank you, Scott. I, it was so exciting for me because I'm like, wow, there's some really obvious things that we can do that are very easy. And you're already performing at these levels. Like, whoa, what's possible for Scott? You know, so yeah, thanks yeah. for allowing me to help you with what I did. And you've helped me so much too. And I'm so excited for the audience to get to hear from you today because not only have you had a really powerful personal journey in entrepreneurship, but you have interviewed so many leaders and yeah. you're such an amazing storyteller and, yeah. uh, you know, able to tell those lessons in an effective way. So you guys are in for a treat. Let's get rolling. Um, Roll. First, first story, first story. I was like, Scott, I'm going to ask you the Les Brown story straight out of the gate. Okay. So we'll tell this story and then we'll kind of backtrack to some other things, but will you share the story of when you were doing, I think it was your first big speaking gig, like big, big stage, like smoke yeah. lights, crazy. You know, tell the story of what happened with Les Brown. Oh, I, I know that story. So I, I was, uh, so Les Brown, so I first started listening to motivational, like books on tape when I was about 19 years old, 1920. So it was a long time ago. And at that time, um, Les Brown was coming up as a motivational speaker. And in my life, you know, um, Les Brown has always been my favorite motivational speaker. Like I, mean, I looked up, so people brilliant. have people that they look up right. to. <laughs> and to me, that was my guy. And yeah. I studied him and I studied how he walked across the stage. I studied how he prepared. I studied all this stuff. And, and I remember I was speaking at an event and Les Brown was on, um, I think he was on after me, bro, because I would never be on before like, <laughs> after him, right? So he was obviously on after me. And I'm standing next to him and we were talking. We kind of got, we'd gotten to know each other. And for whatever reason, and I think it may have been because he was right there. I told him, I said, I was about to go. And I said, Les, I'm nervous. And he looked at me dead in the eye and he said, Scott is a speaker, nervousness is the ultimate form of selfishness. And I said, why? 
And he said, because it means you're only thinking about, about you and not your audience, what you're able to give. And it was just like one of those times in your life where like, first of all, your stomach drops to the floor, right? <laughs> and you're, you're like, whatever. But for me, that was such an impactful message. And I think that taking that a step further, one of the things that I've really learned in life that's been valuable is to focus on being more interested than interesting. Yeah. And I think we get caught up in that trying to be so yeah. interesting where we forget to listen mm -hmm. and we forget to deliver value. And so, yeah. you know, again, just... Props to Les Brown, just the best. I love that story. Thank you so much for sharing it. And I, I have thought of that, you know, when I've gone to speak, like as I connect to the audience and I'm thinking about them, I always remember that story. And it, it does completely take the nervousness away. So and also just so socially anxious people just throwing that out there, something to remember. <laughs> can, we, can I share another speaking story? Yeah, because please. I think if we're talking about speaking, we're talking about presenting, I think that this this lesson was also just really valuable. So another one of my like my hero speakers is a guy named Harvey McKay. Mm -hmm. Love Harvey McKay, icon. Also, so when I worked for Tony Rob, I used to work for Tony Robbins. You know this. Um, like I was twenty when I first got hired. So it was a long time. Tony was thirty. Like so, it, and at that time, Harvey McKay had a book out called "Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive," and he was like the guy in his mm -hmm. particular niche. Always looked up to Harvey. So. I was throwing an event in where I live. So I'm, I'm in Newport Beach. I was throwing an event nearby. And um, and I'm like, who could? And Harvey had a new book coming out. And I called and I asked if he'd be willing to speak. And he said, yes. He said, but here's the thing. You have to pick me up at the airport and take me back. And I'm like, yes. I'm like, yes. oh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm going to do that. So So what happened was, I pick him up at this plane, gets in my car, and we start driving to the event. And so the whole time we're driving, I'm asking him, like, I like lock the doors and put up the windows and I, like I jail him and I ask every question that I could have of like one of my, for one of my icons. And I'm like, Harvey this, Harvey that, Harvey, that, Harvey, that, you know, whatever. So we get to where the event is and I just keep circling because <laughs> we're early. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Oops, got lost. <laughs> so we're circling. <laughs> And then he looks at me really concerned and he goes, Scott, he goes, what time do, does the event start? And I said, well, you're on at such and such a time. So I figured that I'd have him there right in enough time before that, because I was kind of raised around this world when I was younger of motivational speaking, where the big brand speaker is like behind the stage. And then they, there's like the big entrance and nobody gets to talk to that person, like all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I thought I was supposed to do. And he said to me, he goes, no, what time does the first person who's working on the event arrive? Wow. And I said, really? And I said, well, they're there and they're set up and whatever. He goes, then I need to be there. And I said, why? And I'm thinking, why? You're Harvey McKay. And he said, because I want to be at the door and I want to shake everybody's hand who comes in. Mm -hmm. I want to get to know every single person. And he taught me this lesson about interacting with the group before you go on. And he talked about when you do that, what happens is, first of all, when you're on stage, you walk out to this really warm audience, right? right. Second, people see you interacting with people and you're much more relatable in that way. Right. Third, if you're really more interested than being interesting, you're learning what things are most important to that group and what you should address so you're more relevant. So mm -hmm. I thought to myself, gosh, Dan, what a lesson. And he mm -hmm. said, but I got one more. And I said, what's that? He said, always carry a bag of Lay's potato chips with you. And I said, like, 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 can I carry like Doritos Cool Ranch? Like, why do I have to carry <laughs> Lay's? And he said, no. He said, the, the old school yellow bag Lay's potato chips. And I said, why? He said, because when you're a professional speaker and you're traveling, he said, you're going to stay in a lot of hotels. And you're going to use your voice a lot. And he said, what's going to happen is it's going to affect your, your voice quality. He said, if you eat the traditional Lay's potato chips, there's so much oil, it will coat your throat oh and the salt God. will activate your salivary glands. So how you'll have this incredible voice quality. So he opens his bag, homie's got some Lay's potato chips. So, <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is, it's like the littlest things, right? Mm -hmm. Like the 1% over a day, a week, a month, a year. Like, that's what it is. 
And I think that the problem is that most people want to get from here to here overnight. Right. But what you got to love, like Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant's office was right above where I used to work. Kobe Bryant used to say that the hard is the journey. And when you learn, like, that's the great part. And when you learn to love the hard and that part of the journey is when the world really opens up to you. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your journey so the audience can understand you a little more. So you mentioned, you know, you, uh, I know your story. They don't, <laughs> you started off a young, young guy, what 20, you were 20 when you started with Tony yeah. Robbins. Yeah. Right. And then I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but somehow you started working with like, what was it? CBS sports or can you yeah, tell about that? Yeah, whole... yeah. yeah. So just, I, so I worked as a, as a, as a young guy, I got in this like car accident in college. I had to drop out of school for a little bit. I had, these, I had two brain hemorrhages. I was recovering. I started listening to motivational books on tape. And when I got better, by the way, for all of you young people, tape, MP3, like <laughs> that's what we used to listen to. <laughs> so I was listening to these, and I decided um, when I went back to school, I wanted to, um, I wanted to intern for anybody I listened to. And they all lived like San Diego was the Silicon Valley for speakers back then. I applied to it as an intern for Tony Robbins. I got a job. So I started working for Tony Robbins. I got to promote Les Brown when I was young. I worked for a guy named Jim Rohn and promoted him. And then eventually I went from the training business to tech. And I was really early in consumer internet and like super long story short, um, wrote a little business plan for Yahoo when they had 10 people that was like theoretical on how you'd make money in a website and how you build an ad sales team and things like that. And then worked um, really early for companies that became CBSSports.com, then NBC Internet, and then um, was involved in the launch of FoxSports.com also. So kind of like that whole internet thing. And I'm really grateful for that part of your journey because when I came to a mastermind you were putting on in your area, you have like a lot of connections in the sports industry and I got to benefit from some of those. So thank you very, very much. Yeah. <laughs> Forever yeah. grateful. I yeah. will never, ever not brag to my kids that I sat in LeBron James chair in his yeah. room one time at one of your events. Yeah. So yeah, Scott doesn't do it small. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah very in inspiring business leadership lessons also. So um, okay. So from there, like at some point in your journey, you also started um, doing a lot of interviews, right? For yeah. entrepreneur and different podcasts and all sorts of different, you know, leadership uh, experiences you were putting together for people. And you've interviewed over a thousand founders, CEOs, thousand, highly yeah. successful people, like names people know, right? Like, I don't know, throw out maybe who are some of the recognizable names of people you've interviewed? I mean, so many, I mean, I had the chance to work, you know, for Tony Robbins company. So I, you know, right. asking Tony to Richard Branson, you know, to uh, Damon John to, you know, just like a whole, whole, whole bunch of people, um, right. athletes, entertainers, like, like, and I started doing this when I was a kid. And I think it was inspired by, by, by Tony, because, you know, Tony used to always ask this question, what makes people do what they do? And, and, and what is the difference? The difference that makes the difference between the number one person at anything and everyone else. And, you know, it's it's actually funny, you and I have talked about this before, that that over the years, when I would ask that question to people, um, I'd always get a different answer. So I'd say, what's the difference that makes a difference? And like, for example, to Tony Robbins, Tony may say something like state management. And what that would mean to him is the people that are the most successful, you know, learn how to take whatever comes at them and repackage it in their mind in a way that moves them forward. They really have learned how to master their physical and emotional states. If I ask Tony Hawk, right, Tony Hawk, the skateboarder, what he talked about is he talked about how you just got to like, you got to keep going, right? You got to keep going. You got to put in the work. And I remember him saying that, you know, some of the most iconic tricks that he did would take up to 10 years of failing before he got it right for the first time. Wow. You know, if you talk to Sarah Blakely, I mean, she talked about hustle. So, you know, when she was starting Spanx, you know, when she first got into department stores, you know, I remember they, they like put her... And she got like the trials to see if they would buy her stuff. They put those racks in the back. So what did she do? She pretended she worked at the store and she moved them to the front, right? And she just hustled. She didn't ask for permission. You know, you, you talk to like, uh, you talk to like, um, like Sean, like the, 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 um, you know, the, the, the first guy to win Sean White, the first guy to win the Olympic gold medal in snowboarding, also an amazing skater. What is it? And he would talk about goal setting, but but it wasn't real in, in visualization. But but he never would visualize himself going from where he was to achieving the goal. What he did 
is he always started from having achieved the goal and looking back and remembering. Nice. So he told me a story about how when he was training to for the first, you know, uh, Olympic competition for the snowboard, you know, he really, his real goal was he wanted to be on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. And he thought if he won, he might get that chance. So what he did is he went and he had a custom outfit made and he would get ready in the morning as if he had already won the gold and was on his way to the photo shoot. And if you take a look online in Sean White Rolling Stone cover, you'll see what, what it was. So like, here's the thing. It, it, it Over the years, depending on who I talked to, I got a different result, except for the last 18 months. Since chat GPT came out in November of 22, it's crazy. It doesn't matter who I talk to. They all have the same answer. And the answer is this. They have this total like passion this obsession, this maniacal thing for learning, for learning. And, and here's why. It used to be that the pace of change was relatively slow, right? So like you could literally, like when I was growing up, you could look outside your window and you could see your competition. You knew if they were growing because they were expanding their space or if they were shrinking because they go out of business. Right. But the internet changed everything. And the pace of change went from linear to exponential. Yeah. And now with AI, we're going from linear to exponential to really uncomprehensible or incomprehensible. <laughs> That's yeah. how fast that, that things are changing. And, and, and so, I, you know, I, I'll put it another way. A hundred years ago, the average man in the U.S. lived to be about 53 years old. I'm 54. That freaks me out. <laughs> right. So back then it may have been good enough to be good, like good at one thing in life, but that's not the same. And so what I always say to people is this, that whatever it is that made you, you, your superhero power, that thing that you were so great at two years ago is your baggage today. And wow. that is what the top entrepreneurs know. Wow. And, 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 and I've often, if, if you don't mind me sharing, like I, I've tried so hard to figure out how you like practically apply that to your life. And, and I think the best metaphor I've come up with is this. I, I'm a huge basketball fan. I'm a huge Lakers fan. And a few years ago, I had a chance to do something um, at, at a Lakers thing and, and Phil Jackson was there. And the question is, what is the difference? What is the difference that makes the difference between Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant? Arguably the two best players that have ever played the game. And he coached both of them to 11 championships. What's the difference between those two guys and everyone else? And his answer was one word, Shoshin. S-H-O-S-H-I-N, Shoshin. Shoshin is a Buddhist word and it means beginner's mind. And he said every single day when these guys stepped on the court, it, it was as if the first time they ever played the game. They were so open to new ideas that they were able to see really small distinctions that nobody else was able to see. And so what I would encourage people to do today is this, is really approach every day with a beginner's mind, because this world is going to be changing so fast as a result of AI over the next five, 10 years, that that is what you're going to need and stay absolutely, totally committed to learning. I mean, you, you said, how do I actually apply this in my life? And I'm like, you're applying that definitely. Like when I think of the quintessential entrepreneur, like I, your, your picture would be in the dictionary for me. It's like this, this guy, Scott Duffy entrepreneur, you know? Um, and you've done that over and over as we've already heard a little bit about, I mean, there's more, you know, um, I was wondering if you could talk about there was a period where, I mean, you sold one of your companies to Virgin, Richard Branson's group, you know, and then things took a turn south and you had to reinvent yourself again. Yeah. What are, you know, and there's many who either probably will experience that or have. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so what, what lessons did you extract from that to be able to stay in that Shoshin energy and like re basically reinvent yourself, which you have done so many times. I'd say you're yeah. like very skilled at that. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, if, if you're looking at the definition or picture of a, of a quintessential entrepreneur, you know, I would describe it as this. You have good days, like every day is an up and down. It's like this. It's yeah. a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And everybody that I know that has been really successful at anything, particularly in business, particularly financially, 
has has also had down periods that were like equal to the success periods, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. it's 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 tough, right? Mm -hmm. It's tough out there. And I, I, you know, for me personally, you know, I had gone from working in some really cool stuff, right? With the trainer people to some really amazing internet companies, had great exits, made a ton of money. Um, I, I sold a company I started to, you know, virtually, and it was like, literally, I got to sit alongside like my hero in, in Richard Branson, like, like my, literally my hero from an entrepreneur standpoint. And, and then in 2008, you know, when everything was good, the market crashed, you know, and, you know, just like overnight, I went from, you know, having all this money and stuff like that to losing everything and literally going upside down, like over half a million dollars it's seemingly overnight, like it was in a hand, like it was in months, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what to do. And I think I did what probably just about any entrepreneur would do, which is like curl up in the fetal position <laughs> <laughs> in the bedroom and and just like like roll around for 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 a year. And, and it was really hard. And yeah. I was really proud. I didn't want to say, I don't want to ask for help. Right. I didn't want to share with people what's going on. By the way, you know, it's such a common thing with entrepreneurs. Like mm -hmm. if you ask any entrepreneur, how's your day? Everyone has the same answer. Great. How's your business? Great. Right. Because <laughs> we have to put on a brave face. I tried to put on a brave face and, um, and it was really, really hard. And it was really hard for me. It was really hard for my family. Um, it was hard for everybody. And then one day I got a call. And, um, a guy that I had known who I really, I really respect, he called me and he said, he, he called me Duff for Scott Duffy. He said, Duff, he said, I heard you're, you're looking around a company. And I said, yeah, he goes, you're hired. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, dude, you're hired. And I said, amazing. You have no idea. Amazing. I said, what, what am I going to do? And he's like, what does it matter? <laughs> like, what, <laughs> like, what does it matter with where you are? What does it matter? Like, I overthink everything. He said, come and have lunch with me today. And, uh, and we'll talk about it. And so I went out to meet him in Pasadena that day. I lived in LA and I went to meet him and, and I said, what do you want? He said, well, first of all, I kind of made a decision. You're not going to run it, but you're going to, you're going to be a salesperson for, for me. I said, great. I said, I, I could use the money. Awesome. Thank you. I said, what am I going to sell? And he said this, P. And I said, what? And he said, you're going to sell P. I said, what does that even mean? And he said, I just bought a research lab and we process urine. Like, you know, you go to the doctor's office, yeah. you it, up, it comes to us. We would say that we give a report, give back. He said, you're going to, you're going to go to the doctor's offices and, and you're going to win their urine business, their pee business. <laughs> and he had a vision for me. And his vision for me was that like in a year or something, I was going to become the king of pee. <laughs> <laughs> and like that was my first job offer after selling a company to virgin like that's that's how rough wow it wow and did i take it no like i did i was <laughs> i was so angry that he would offer that to me like like i could say like i was pissed off right but like i was i was i was just really i was really i was really angry about it and i should have taken the job but i was too prideful and <laughs> um and so i did what i think most people do when things go sideways or not expected as planned, which is I doubled down in what I was doing before that had always made things work. And right. so while I was doing the same thing over and over and over again, the world was changing and doing things in new and different ways. Mm -hmm. Again, this comes back to Shosha. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have that understanding at the time. And so the deeper I went into what used to work, the deeper I got into a hole is what happened. And then, you know, and, and, you know, I think a couple other things happened at that time. One is, I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, when things are tough, we wait for the cavalry to come. We yeah. think somebody's going to save us. The cavalry ain't coming. Yeah. It's lonely at that time. You got to work your way out. And it's up to you to do the work. And, and the best metaphor I, I, I can use is it's like a mirror. If you look into a mirror and what you see in the reflection is you with a sad face, you're not going to go to the mirror and say, Hey, change that. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to change in order for the reflection to change. Mm -hmm. And so you have to work on yourself. And I didn't know how to do it. And one day it was probably one of the worst days and the hardest days of my life. I pulled over to parking lot here in Costa Mesa and I put down the seat. I was crying my eyes out. I didn't know what to do. 
And I called a friend of mine at the time, David Meltzer. And I said, Dave, I don't know what to do, but I know you have been through super hard. And one of the things I've learned is that people that have been through super hard are incredibly gracious about helping people go through super hard and sharing how they got out of it. Mm -hmm. I said, Dave, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. He was fucking awesome. He said, I'm here for you. And he said, here's what we're going to do starting today. He said, number one, four things. He said, number one, he said, you're going to take responsibility for everything. It wasn't the market. It was you. Next time you got to be better prepared, right? Mm. Was the market it was you? He said, number two, you got to forgive yourself for everything. And for me, that was the hardest mm. part. Number three, you got to find the lesson in everything. So I can do that. And number four, you got to be grateful for all of it. And I'm like, that's where you lost me, right? But then I learned that gratitude changes everything because it shifts your, your, your focus from what you don't have to what you do have. Mm -hmm. And so I started to practice that. And Dave, he made me call him every single day for a year. Wow. wow. And there were so many days I didn't call because I was too embarrassed to call. Mm -hmm. And he would be upset with me on those days and go, I am the guy that is here for you right? Mm -hmm. All you have to do is call me once a day. Yeah. And it, so, so that was, I mean, that was really the thing that got things to start to change for wow. me. And, and so again, my message to entrepreneurs is this, if you need help, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that there are people out there that have gone through the exact same thing or worse, and they want to help you. You just have to ask. Mm -mm. Thank you for sharing that. Only, only one way to get wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way. That's a way. Uh, yeah. um, okay. So in terms of, well, now we're kind of talking about reinventing yourself, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about what you're doing now um, yeah. from a personal curiosity standpoint. And I think the audience too, because you now have AI Mavericks Yeah. and yeah. Uh, kudos, seriously, Scott. Cause like, I mean, to be 54 and you're on top of AI like this, I'm like, yeah. you're really walking the walk of everything you just talked about. Yeah. Cause you know, I'm at the point, my kids are like, why don't you just chat GPT? And I'm like, Oh yeah, I forgot that that existed. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. So um, what is AI Mavericks? So basically what we are is we work with founders and we work with CEOs, entrepreneurs, leadership teams. And, um, and, and we basically, just super simplify and de demystify AI for them. Mm -hmm. And we teach them how to build an AI vision and strategy and a roadmap for their business. Mm -hmm. And we put them around a group of amazing people that are committed to helping them get there. Nice. Because when I talk to most people today about AI, see, there's this perception out there that everyone uses AI because it's all over the media. Yeah. But I just want to create like some reality here. Um, the latest data shows that in May, only 6% of companies in America use ChatGPT. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 6% of companies in America use AI. Wow. Six. And we are the most progressive country in the world right now using AI. Oh, wow. Only 6%. But there's a, there's a perception. So when I'm talking to founders and stuff like that, they're typically stuck between this fear of missing out and the mm -hmm. fear of jumping in. Mm -hmm. They don't even know where to start. And they think that they're so far behind and they're not. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what we do is, is we teach people, you know, what they need to know and how to think about using AI in your business. We show them like all kinds of case studies and demos so that they can see what's possible. We actually do these little things with them where we, we show them and we teach them how to use chat GPT in different ways only so they can see what's possible. And then what happens is when they get more familiar, more comfortable with it, now their mind is open and they're like, okay, so how can I use this? And what I always say is this, just think of AI as a tool. It's mm -hmm. just a tool to help you to solve a problem in your business. So mm -hmm. let's pick any, like, let's take your goal for your company and let's ask ourselves a question. What is one thing that could prevent you from achieving your goal? And then once you figure that out, is there an AI tool that can help you mm. to solve that problem? Mm. And that's just really how, how we approach this. And so we have, a, we have a live, con we have a conference that we do. Our next one is October 21st to 23rd in San Diego. We're just about to uh, announce an, an online mastermind, $250 a month. We meet once a week 
uh, for an hour. And we, we, every, every hour that you spend with us, you're going to walk away with something that you've created that you can use that day in your business. Mm. And then, um, and then we're building all kinds of certification programs right now. So you'll be able to take our certs and be able to put them on your resume and put mm -hmm. them out there uh, for companies as well. Nice. Yeah. Cause it's one of those things, right. Where we get stuck in our ways. Like we kind yeah. of been talking about, we stuck in our ways. And you said something like what you were really good at two years ago is going to become your baggage today. Yeah. And I can totally see that. Right. Because we're, yeah. we, it is, what did you say? It's going incomprehensibly fast, the exponential change that's happening because of technology. And so we get stuck in our ways when we don't realize that we could be doing something much more efficiently with way less work, paying people yeah. less money for tasks that kind of bog them down when they could be doing something else for the company, more beneficial, you know? And yeah. I think there is this resistance of, well, then I'm going to have to change, right? Then I'm going to have to yeah. figure this out. So to be able to just spoon feed that essentially to business owners so they can get there and see how much more easy it will make their life for them is really awesome. You know, and, and people ask, where should I start? And the place to start is just, Download the ChatGPT app or go yeah. to it on your desktop and sign up yeah. and just ask it a question. Right. What are you? You know, mm -hmm. what is ChatGPT? How do I use you? You know, just simple things like that. Um, and, and and I think that, you know, I got another a quick story. So that I think is a really good metaphor for this. Yeah. So uh, when I was living up in the Bay Area, I went to this venture capital conference I was invited to. We couldn't tell people like that we were going to sign these NDAs or I think something, something like that. And when we got there, when we were checking in, everyone was given like a different color. I, I don't remember if it's a different color, like a different number on their shirt. And the people, you're supposed to find everybody with the same thing, same shirt. And you're on a team. And that team was going to go on a scavenger hunt for eight hours, like eight hours around the big island of Hawaii. And I remember when I, I checked out, I'm like looking for people and I, Sarah Lacey was one of them. And she's like this iconic writer in Silicon Valley. She's so amazing. Um, Bill Ty, like this famous venture capitalist, Dick, who ended up running Twitter um, at, at one point. And um, we couldn't find the last guy. And I turned around and I literally bumped into him, MC Hammer. No. <laughs> remember MC <laughs> Hammer, right? The yeah, dancer. The, yeah. <laughs> the so he, an incredible entrepreneur. And, and I remember we went to the first clue and we were in this white van. We went to the, the first clue and there were these things in the, and, and, and we mean to concern, we can't get it. And Hammer was like disconnected. He was on his phone and said, Hammer, well, could you come help us out? And he read the clue. He probably read it once, like dropped the paper, like dropped the mic. And he said, do this, 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 and this. And he got it. He got it right. We went to the second clue and Hammer got it. I think we had eight clues that day. And I'm pretty sure MC Hammer got every one of them. Huh. And I remember that night I was in the bar and I ran into him and I said, that was amazing. How did you do that? And he said this, he said, you entrepreneurs are all the same. He said, you start here and you want to get there and you make everything so damn complicated in between. Mm -hmm. And he said, I live my life by a very simple philosophy. I always find a way to the simplest path first. Wow. If you want to really prepare yourself for the next 10 years, the simplest thing you can do is just download and start asking questions in ChatGPT. That is it. It is that simple. How do I use ChatGPT? Enter. What is a custom GPT? Enter. Can you teach me how to create a custom GPT? Enter. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. If you want to create true value, if you're out there looking for work on a resume, let's stay simple. The number one skill you can have, or the number one thing you can have is a certification that says you understand the basics of AI and how to use chat GPT. And you just increased your value 35, 40% in the, wow. in the, from a salary standpoint. Wow. That's how important that skill is today. So let's keep it really simple. Just go to chat GPT. And if yeah. you want more, come to AI Mavericks. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And like, I just got to say, you know, I'm, I'm 41. My kids, my youngest is almost 12. My daughter, my oldest just graduated. And like, I am becoming keenly aware of the fact that like, I am entering the age group now that 
if we don't stay on top, intentionally stay on top of what's coming, we're yeah. becoming increasingly obsolete. And I don't know how else to say it because even my, my 11 year old son, he wants a phone. We haven't gotten him a phone yet. He literally made me a Google slides presentation with animation, with this whole, here are the reasons I think I should get a phone. And it had these like huge words in it. It was very persuasive. And then he put a little star at the bottom. No, I totally didn't use chat GBT to make this right. You know, that's what he put at the bottom. <laughs> and he just has this big smile on his face, Good you know, and I'm like Good 11 year olds are, are doing this, you know, um, yeah. my daughter, she uses it all the time. Right. So if we are getting, you know, older and we're not staying on top of these things, like we will stay in this kind of do everything the hard way. Like we're still using typewriters when other people have switched to computers kind of vibe, yeah. you know, so yeah. something to be thinking about. You know, when I was in college, I uh, I remember that when I, I've always said that I I feel like I was born, I was born in 1970. And I always feel like 1970 is like this digital divide. And what I mean by that is when I was in, in grammar school, when I was in elementary school, the grade after me was required to take typing. And I went into high school, the mm. grade behind me was required to take computers. Wow. And when I went to college, my freshman year, there were a couple guys that were friends of mine that had a Mac and I had an electronic typewriter. <laughs> which was so I thought so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's like, it's vintage now. <laughs> <laughs> so I, but, but the ability to word process, just the ability to not have to pull out whiteout. Most people don't even, you know, yeah. young me don't even know what that is, but like, white out and literally put this white stuff over the word that you typed wrong right. to make it kind of disappear and match the versus being on on your mac and being right. able to hit you know backspace and have it delete the word right it was incredible we're there right now with 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 uh with with ai and with chat gpt and the thing is if you've never used chat gpt or you haven't used it much just think of it this way. Just think of it as like going to a page, like going to Google start page, or the only thing there on that page is a search box. Yeah. And you're already used to typing your search in there, right? right? The difference is the result for Google that you get is going to be pages of results with links to other websites. And you have to go try and find or piece together your answer. Right. The difference is chat GPT is going to tell you the answer. Nice. It's read every single page on the internet and it's learned the answer to the question that you have. So it's not going to, so literally in a second, you're able to get the thing that you were looking for most, where you may you know, be on Google for minutes or hours or whatever, trying to find what it is you're searching for. Wow. It's that simple, but it's mm -hmm. like this much, right? It's like just small changes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Speaking of that, what are some applications for AI that people might not be considering? You know, so maybe you're running a business, maybe you like, um, I've got a friend who runs a business doing like fire safety supplies and businesses, the sprinklers and blah, blah, blah. Like what are some applications for some business that maybe doesn't think or know they need AI that you could enlighten them about? Well, I, I think that um, I'll tell you first, the thing that I think you have to do and then I'll tell you a, the, 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 a cool application. So the most important thing that you can do to get AI to work the best for you is organize your data. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. So, and, and here's a tool, like here's a cool thing. So I, I work with a company called Delphi and D-E-L-P-H-I. Yeah, go to Delphi, check it out. It's amazing. And what they are is they're a cloning technology. So I went to them and I said, they were actually demoed at our last event in, in this coming event. And I said to Delphi, I said, here's the problem I have. I said, I get calls and I get texts and I get emails every day asking people about how to like start a business or scale a business or sell a business or raise money. And I don't have time anymore to take all those questions. Um, I've got books out there, but people still reach out to me. Well, here's what they've done. They've created a cloning technology that could basically imagine take everything that I've ever done, all my social media posts, all my books, all my articles, wow. everything I've ever, and imagine if that technology could learn it. Right? It could like literally learn it. And wow. so somebody could come to my site and they could just type in or they could voice, hey, Scott, how do I raise money? And in my voice, the clone wow. voice, 
comes the answer from all of my stuff. Wow. Right? So when I set this up, by the way, we're launching video. So our next event, we're actually going to launch the video part of Delphi where you can actually be talking to me and it's going to be a clone of me, but you will think it's me. Right. And so how, how cool is that? Right. Wow. So, so imagine if you're trying to sell something, you're trying to prospect, somebody has questions, you don't need to be involved, but, but it took me a total of about 10 to 15 minutes to set it up. That's it. And wow. here's why. Here's why. It said, first, upload whatever data you have. Okay. So I had a page. I have a Google sheet that has like all of the articles I've ever written and the link to those articles. I have a page that has a link to all of my YouTube videos, right? I have the books that I've written in a PDF form. So I literally just went to a single content folder and I just dragged everything at one time and it uploaded. It mm -hmm. took about, uh, I, I don't want to, three seconds, maybe four. And it not only had uploaded it, it had already trained on the data. What? Then what I did is I went and I, this is crazy. <laughs> then what I went is I, um, I did, I think two 30 second voice samples where I just read something uh -huh. for like 30 seconds. And that was it. So if you go to my website now, I believe we still have the original demo up. If you go to scottduffy.com and scroll to the bottom, I, I believe we still have that up. Or uh, it, here's kind of a fun thing to do. I'm going to actually, I'm going to read something real quick. If you go to this phone number, if you call, I need my glasses, 636-342-8214. So 636-342-8214. And ask any question about starting a business, raising money, scaling a company, personal development stuff. That wow. voice that you hear is my cloned voice. And I'll have a full conversation with you. What? I'm totally going to try it out. But here's the key thing. And, and you know what? You need to do this for your business. Because there are probably a lot of questions that people ask you over and over again. Mm -hmm. And if we can upload your books and your content, we can upload all of these. It will not only learn how to answer the, it will not only answer the questions for you as if it's you, but it will also do it in your, the way you do it. It will learn your style. Crazy. So it will talk just like you. And in and, and, and every day, this, this technology is getting exponentially better. Let me tell you how fast it's doing that. It took, so, so OpenAI, which owns ChatGPT, I believe they started working on their model around 2017-ish. It's 2024. So what's that? Seven years. Okay. And we've got this amazing thing, ChatGPT. The processing power of all these chips enable us to do more faster and the models to learn faster. Elon Musk just installed in the US the biggest cluster of these chips, these NVIDIA chips, which basically in the time of about one week learned what chat GPT took seven years to build. That's how wow. fast it can learn the model. So this is how fast. So this is why you just have to stay committed to learning. I would yeah. say a great tool to start with is Delphi, do the cloning. And then, you know, what's really cool. You can also sell it as a product. You can now have a digital version of you as a coach, a digital coach to help people out. Wow. And instead of contacting you directly, they can go and they can go to the digital coach and they can be like, okay, Tara, like, I, like I need something. I need another exercise for my abs or, you know, I, my, my energy has been really low and I'm taking this particular supplement and whatever. Like, what do you recommend? Wow. And it will answer you. It's making me think of Iron Man, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Or like, like a really high end Alexa or something, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's, actually, that's yeah. insane. Okay. I, I, uh, wait, wait, one more, one more Iron Man yeah. story. I, I think it's really important for people to understand where this, why they need to learn the foundational stuff. Now, remember, I'm telling you about all this cool stuff, but only 6% of companies use AI today in the U S so we're just at the beginning. And the most important thing to do at the beginning is just use chat GPT. Mm -hmm. just, just use chat GPT. That's it. So um, the story I was going to tell you is I, I was just meeting with a company and we were talking about robotics, which is a passion of mine. And this company makes uh, wigs, 
with real human hair. Okay. Mm -hmm. So imagine they used to do it in the US, cost of labor was too expensive, they moved it to China. They had all of these small girls, small women with tiny hands that would thread hair strand by hair strand would would make these things. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine no. that labor? No. Right? So they just, uh, just prior to me going into the office, they just got a test of a robot that can not only do that work, okay, but it can do the work faster and in a single shift, replace 35 people. And the hands of the robot work so well that it can literally grab a single strand of hair from one end to the other and assemble it into a wig. Wow. And replace 35 people in an hour. And this thing can work 24 hours. It never has to stop. But all you, have, all you have to do is learn how to use ChatGPT. And that brings me to my next thing, because I'm sure you've run into it. Maybe not, but I, you know, the, the resistance to this, right? The resistance to like AI, you know, oh, we're going to clone yeah. Scott, like absolutely yeah. not. Or, you know, oh, those people need that job weaving hair or whatever. You know, what do you say to people who have resistance to these types of technologies? I just say, welcome to unemployment. <laughs> I say either welcome to, welcome to unemployed an unemployed feature unless you're in a handful of industries or, or welcome to your business being completely disrupted and put out of business by the competition. And, and it may not happen overnight, but here's the thing. There's, there's that, there's that saying that it's not AI that will replace you. It's the person that uses AI that will replace you. Hmm. And for the next several years, that's, that's going to be what I think is, is important to focus on, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, using AI as a tool to be able to take the routine and the mundane tasks in your business right. and assign them to robotics right. so that you can focus your time on the most valuable parts of your business and the things that you do best. Mm -hmm. So you like have the most, the, like the best, most customized like help that you could possibly have if you learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is if you're not doing that and you're spending your time on repetitive stuff that, right. that the technology can do and your competition has outsourced all that to tech and they do the important stuff, mm -hmm. then, then that's where the difference is here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, it makes me think of like before there were washing machines and it's like, well, there's yeah. people who wash clothes by hand for their job. And it's like, well, maybe they can find something a little more enjoyable and fulfilling for themselves instead. So, and when you can just have the machine do it, you know, that's, that's a great yeah. metaphor. I mean, yeah. that really is a great <laughs> metaphor. It's not like, I mean, what it does, did is it, that the washing machine opened up time for the person right. who was washing to go and do other things that were valuable. Totally. hundred percent. Wow, yeah. cool. I'm really glad I asked about the AI stuff towards the end there. Wow. Okay. I'm going to be, I have used chat GBT a little bit in my business and I have been blown away. I'm like, oh, wow. This like perfectly summed up what I was trying to send to this client. Like, wow. You know, and it's pretty impressive. So yeah, I'm excited to explore it a little more and call that phone number. I'm definitely going to have a, <laughs> a, a talk with quote unquote, Scott. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh man, Scott, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, we'll link yeah. up that AI Mavericks, um, conference. It's a conference you're having. It, it is. So it's, it's the AI Mavericks conference. We keep it small so we can be really hands-on. So we, we limit our things to a hundred people Okay. Next is in San Diego, October 21st to 23rd. I mean, we just have a sick, amazing group of people that are going to be there. And, and here's the thing, if you're afraid of AI, you're nervous about AI, you it's the perfect place to come because yeah. that is the problem. That is one of the problems that we solve. If you are trying to figure out how to implement AI in your business, where to start, who to use, who to go to for support, that's the role that we fill. And so we can help you in those ways. Mm -hmm. And that you get the added bonus of just being around Scott and anyone that Scott attracts, like that's the value in and of itself. And then as a bonus, you're going to learn about AI stuff, but I've been to your events and they're 
pretty impacting. Awesome. <laughs> so thank you for that. And we'll link up also, you know, Scott has many books and all sorts of different things I'll link up to. Um, ScottDuffy.com is his website and you can find him online as well. But, and you have a podcast, right? For about the I, AI. So I'm actually, I'm starting a new podcast. So, okay. so we'll have it up in about, in about a month. Okay. We're producing it right now, like the, the stuff. And um, okay. check out AIMavericks.ai. AIMavericks.ai okay. to learn more about the event. Okay, perfect. All right. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you. So good talking with you again. You too.